everyone is looking at the wrong threat. For the last two years, the headlines screamed that AI was coming for your job. They missed the real story. Amazon is slashing 14,000 corporate jobs. Target is preparing to cut 1,800 corporate jobs. UPS also slashing nearly 48,000 workers. AI isn't just coming for the worker, it is coming for the workplace. 2026 isn't the year AI replaces humans. It is the year AI replaces the internet itself. We are watching the collapse of a 25-year-old architecture. The ritual of typing keywords, scanning blue links, and fighting through pop-ups is ending. It is being replaced by a model-powered environment where the browser window dissolves and the interface becomes invisible. Today, we break down exactly how the interface dissolves, why the open web is about to go dark, and what happens to your career when the entire digital world moves inside a model. Chapter 1. The Death of the Search Bar Bill Gates famously said, AI is not just a new technology, it is the new GUI. He's right. We are moving from a graphical user interface, where you click icons, to a natural user interface, where the machine understands intent. The era of navigating the web is over, the era of commanding it has begun. To understand why the internet is dying, you have to look at what it feels like to use the web today. It is broken. You type a query, you get four sponsored links. You scroll past, people also ask. The signal to noise ratio has hit zero. The model that replaces this isn't a better search engine, it's an extraction engine. Gartner, the major IT research firm, has officially predicted that traditional search engine volume will drop by 25% by 2026. Think about what that means. That is billions of clicks evaporating. Why? Because of tools like Perplexity Comet. Enter Perplexity Comet. Comet doesn't behave like a search engine. It behaves like a senior analyst who doesn't sleep. You say, find me the best three ergonomic chairs under $500, cross-reference Reddit threads for durability complaints, and check the warranty terms. The agent pauses, it builds a plan, it visits the manufacturer's site, it reads 50 Reddit threads to find the real complaints, it checks the legal fine print. Finally, it synthesizes all of that into a single, clean paragraph. Perplexity CEO Aravind Srinivas calls this the shift from search engines to answer engines. In the old world, Google's goal was to send you away to a website. In the new world, the AI's goal is to save you the trip. You never saw a website, you never gave a click, you never saw an ad. For you, this is paradise. But for the web economy, this is an extinction event. The noisy, SEO-filled web collapses, leaving behind a silent, efficient void where only the AI speaks. Chapter 2. The New Operating System Once the search bar dies, the apps follow. This is where OpenAI Atlas walks in. Atlas isn't a chatbot. It is an agent operating system that lives on your screen. Right now, your computer is a collection of silos. Atlas removes the silos. Imagine you need to plan a business trip to London. In 2026, inside an Atlas environment, you just say, book the London trip. The agent wakes up. It accesses your visual layer. It checks your calendar, filters flights based on your preferences, navigates to the booking page, moves the mouse, clicks the fields, and enters your passport data. It doesn't ask you for the credit card, it has access to the wallet protocol. It didn't just help you, it became you. Software stops being a tool, it becomes a behavior. This isn't sci-fi. Anthropic, the creators of Claude, recently released computer use capability, tech that literally allows the AI to look at your screen, move your cursor, click buttons, and type text, just like a human hand would. Chapter 3. The Invisible Protocol But for Atlas to work at scale, the machines need a new way to speak. Right now, the web is built for human eyes, HTML, CSS, images. But if the AI is doing the browsing, it doesn't need a user interface, it needs data. This is the headless web. In this new world, companies stop building pages for you and start exposing actions for the AI. We are already seeing this with the rise of large action models, or LAMs. Websites are beginning to offer two versions, the pretty version for the remaining humans and the raw, headless version for the billion AI agents scraping it every second. Your agent doesn't look at the Uber app, it calls the Uber protocol. The internet goes dark for humans because the conversation is happening entirely between machines. Chapter 4. The Platform War Now look at the battlefield. Google is the terrain, but Google is terrified. Their entire business model is based on you looking at a screen to see an ad. 
If an agent executes the task in the background, the eyeball economy collapses. Google's ad machinery, built on human attention, grinds to a halt. OpenAI is the aggressor. They want to be your memory, your researcher, your scheduler, and your buyer. They want to be the OS of you. Sam Altman recently stated that the intelligence of an AI model roughly equals the log of the resources used to train it. This is a resource war. Microsoft and OpenAI are betting that if they control the compute, they control the user. Apple stands at the gate. Their pitch is simple. Don't trust Google with your data. Don't trust OpenAI with your life. Trust the chip in your pocket. Apple knows that eventually you will want an agent that runs locally, one that doesn't send your bank details to a server in the cloud. Chapter five, agentic commerce, the death of marketing. Then the agents get wallets. This is agentic commerce. For the history of business, we bought things because the packaging was pretty or because we were insecure. But the shopping assistant doesn't browse, it hunts. In late 2025, Stripe and PwC launched the Agentic Commerce Protocol. This is the financial rail for machines. It allows an AI to hold money, negotiate prices, and execute contracts without a human ever signing a document. It creates a transaction between two pieces of software in milliseconds. The traditional marketing funnel dissolves. You cannot emotional blackmail an algorithm. You cannot retarget an AI agent. We are moving from an attention economy to a protocol economy, where whoever has the best data wins. Chapter 6. The Dark Forest and the Gated Web As the agents take over the open web, the humans retreat. The open internet becomes the dark forest, a noisy wasteland of infinite AI-generated content and spam. A recent study from UC San Diego found that in blind tests, people couldn't distinguish GPT-4 from a human 40% of the time. By 2026, that number hits 90%. When you can't tell if an email, a tweet, or a review is real, trust evaporates. In response, the gated web emerges. We will see the rise of the verified human badge as a digital passport. If the open web is for the machines, the closed web becomes the luxury lounge for the humans. Chapter 7. The Analog Rebellion And because silicon can fake everything, the only thing that retains value is friction. We see the analog rebellion. When an agent can write a perfect email, the handwritten note becomes power. Made by human becomes the new organic. Authenticity becomes the ultimate luxury good. We are already seeing this in the travel industry. While booking flights is automated, travel advisors are seeing a resurgence for complex trips. Why? Because high net worth individuals don't want an algorithm planning their honeymoon. They want a human who understands nuance. In an automated world, doing things the hard way becomes the ultimate proof of wealth. Chapter eight, the new job market. So where do you fit in? We don't need coders, we need agent systems engineers and model psychologists. Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, said it bluntly. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program and that the programming language is human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. Meanwhile, blue collar trades, electricians, plumbers, see their wages skyrocket because an agent cannot navigate a crawl space. For the knowledge worker, you stop selling your labor and start selling your oversight. Millions will leave W2 jobs to run micro businesses powered by fleets of agents. Income stops coming from a company and starts coming from your ability to command the machines. But you cannot command what you do not understand. Most people are still updating resumes for 2025, unaware that the game board has already flipped to 2026. To ensure you are the one running the agents and not the one being replaced by them, I've mapped out the transition in the AI career survival guide. It is the tactical playbook for moving from worker to architect. The link is in the description and the pinned comment. Secure your future now because the window to adapt is closing. Chapter nine, the hidden opportunity. The wealth in 2026 won't come from building the tools. It will come from spotting the mispriced assets before the public realizes the internet has changed. While everyone else is trying to rank on Google, the smart money is building niche agents that dominate vertical markets. Think micro SaaS, but for agents. A dedicated agent that does nothing but negotiate parking tickets. An agent that only audits dental insurance claims. These aren't billion dollar companies, they are million dollar scripts run by one person. The opportunity isn't in building the AI, it's in understanding where human attention flows when the screen goes dark.
2026 is not the end of human relevance, but it is the end of the internet as we have known it for 30 years. The interface is dissolving, the agents are waking up. We are entering a world where the digital is automated and the physical is premium. If you want to understand how to build wealth in the age of agents, grab the guide below and subscribe, because the next 12 months will define the next 12 years.